Welcome back. So this is our warm-up lecture of how to use the fast Fourier transform in Python. And so in this lecture, what I'm going to do is create a really simple uh, data set, which is just the sum of two sine waves of different frequencies. We're going to add noise to that data set, and we're going to use the fast Fourier transform to pull out uh, kind of the, the structure in the data and denoise. Okay, so in this example, we're going to see what the fast Fourier transform is, how you apply it to data, uh, and how you actually do that in Python. Okay, so this is the code. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our signal with two frequencies. So we're going to have a time step of 0 0.001 uh, samples per second. And we're going to have a data set that goes from time 0 to time 1 which is the sum of this sine wave with frequency 50 hertz and this sine wave with frequency 120 hertz. Okay, so we're going to add up those two pure tone sine waves. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that clean signal F and we're going to add a bunch of random white noise to it. Okay, and in fact, this is actually quite a lot of random noise. So if I add up two sine waves, then kind of the maximum uh, variation I can get is plus or minus two. I'm adding white noise with magnitude 2.5. So this is a lot of, of random noise. And now I'm just going to plot uh, both the clean signal and the noisy signal here. So you can see um, here. Uh, this is a data set in time, and this is the signal. In white here, we have the clean two-tone sine wave, which is 50 hertz plus 120 hertz. And red is the noisy data once you add that Gaussian white noise on top. Okay, And so we're going to play a game. We're going to act like someone sent us this red data and didn't tell us anything about the low dimensional structure that this was just two sine waves added up. So we're only going to get the red data and we're going to have to infer kind of what the clean denoise signal would be using this fast Fourier transform. Okay. So the first thing we do is we actually compute the fast Fourier transform, okay? Um, and in, in uh, pretty much every programming language, this is super simple because it's so fundamental and you want to use it all the time. Uh, they've made it as simple as possible. So uh, in NumPy, you just run this FFT command. So uh, numpy.fft.fft, and you give it the data f and the length of that data n, how many data points there are, and it returns f hat. Okay, so just to remember, uh, we have our data f, which is in a vector. We're going to run it through this fft command, and we're going to get this vector f hat of Fourier coefficients. Okay, these are complex valued Fourier coefficients that tell you how much uh, kind of magnitude, what are the magnitude and phase of the sine and cosine components of increasing frequency you would have to add up to get this data set. Okay, so these are complex values with a magnitude and a phase. The magnitude tells you how important that particular frequency is. The phase tells you if it's more cosine or sine and, and what mixture. Okay, and once you have this uh, Fourier transform, now what we're going to do is compute the power spectral density, the PSD, which is just f hat times the conjugate of f hat divided by n. And so I like to think of this, um, if you take... Um, if you take lambda, some complex number lambda, times lambda uh, conjugate, this is essentially going to give you the magnitude of lambda squared, if this is a complex number. I'm just going to write this out for you. Lambda equals a plus ib, so lambda uh, conjugate would be a minus ib. And so if you multiply lambda times lambda bar, you get a squared minus i squared times b squared a squared plus b squared, okay? So lambda times lambda bar or lambda conjugate just gives you uh, the magnitude of lambda squared. And that's what we're doing here with, uh, with f hat. So we're computing the magnitude of each Fourier coefficient squared, and we're gonna get a vector of powers at each frequency. Okay, and you can convince yourself um, that if this is a, a function of time, then these, uh, each, each frequency has units of per second. Uh, these will be in units of hertz. And so you can convince yourself that uh, if I take f hat times its conjugate, uh, this will have kind of units of power. Um, so, so this is the power spectral density that we're computing here. Then I have to compute this uh, vector of frequencies. So each entry in here corresponds to a particular frequency from low frequency to high frequency. And so I have to actually build a vector of all of those frequencies um, in this, this freak vector. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot my power spectrum, the magnitude of F squared, F hat squared, versus the frequency in units of hertz. Okay, so I'm going to run this code. And so we have our data, noisy and clean. And now what we see is our power spectral density, our power spectrum as a function of frequency. So please, uh, for those of you at home, actually label your X and Y axes, okay? Um, this bottom plot is the power spectrum and it has the X axis is in Hertz, okay? So it's in frequencies. And the Y axis tells you how much power is in each of those frequencies in the red data. Okay, and so right off the bat, what you see here is that even though the signal is noisy, the power spectrum has two super clean peaks, one at 50 hertz and another at 120 hertz. Okay, so that tells you that most of the power in this red signal, even though it's pretty noisy, is in 50 hertz and 120 hertz. And then there's a bunch of noise in this noise floor that's contributing uh, to the jitter on the data. And so what that tells us is that you can actually filter this data, so you could actually um, you could actually draw a line at some value. I'm going to pick 100, and any Fourier coefficient that's smaller than 100, I'm just going to zero it out, and any Fourier coefficient that's larger than 100, I'm going to keep it. Okay, and then we're going to inverse Fourier transform and try to reconstruct our clean. We're going to try to denoise the red signal and get a clean signal with just these two frequencies. Okay, so I'm going to write that out here. What we're going to do is we're going to filter. We're going to literally take all of our values that have, have f magnitude squared less than 100, and we're going to kill all of those terms. So we're going to get f hat filtered. Okay, these are still Fourier coefficients. And then I can take the inverse fast Fourier transform. It's literally the IFFT command. Uh, and I'm going to get f filtered, and this is going to be my filtered time series. It's going to have units uh, of time. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to kill all of these small Fourier coefficients, and then we're going to inverse Fourier transform. And again, this is quite easy to do uh, in Python. What we're going to do is get this indices vector by saying indices equals PSD greater than 100. It's literally going to take uh, that whole power spectral density vector, and it's going to check every element if it's bigger than 100. If it's smaller than 100, it'll give a zero, and if it's bigger than 100, it'll give a one. So this indices vector will be a big vector, mostly of zeros, because most of these are smaller than 100, and it'll have two entries of one at the entry corresponding to 50 hertz and 120 hertz. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my power spectrum and I'm gonna multiply it by that indice vector, and it's gonna zero out all of the indices that have a uh, small Fourier coefficient, and it's only going to keep uh, those that have uh, power greater than 100. Okay, uh, That's going to be this f hat kind of clean here, and then I'm going to inverse Fourier transform to get my filtered signal, and I'm going to plot that for you. Okay, so I'm going to run this, and then finally I'm going to plot everything together. Okay, good. So remember, we had this red noisy data, we Fourier transformed it. We realized that we could get rid of um, all of the small Fourier coefficients, so we manually zeroed those out, and we only kept these two uh, white peaks, these filtered peaks at 50 and 120. And I didn't tell the computer that it was 50 hertz and 120. It just picked whatever values were bigger than some threshold. Okay, And then when you inverse Fourier transform, the signal you recover, this white signal here, is the filtered signal that corresponds to what uh, is underneath all of this noise in the original data. It's a little hard to see because the, the scales are different, but this is in fact actually the sum of 50 hertz and 120 hertz uh, that's in this white signal up here. Okay, so this is super useful. This is just a toy example to show you uh, if you have data, you can first compute its Fourier transform, which gives you an interesting uh, and intuitive interpretation in terms of the power spectrum, this power spectral density function, uh, which is just the magnitude of F squared at each frequency. This has units of, of hertz in the x-axis. And then you can use that in this case to filter noisy data by finding whatever peaks are above some noise floor, zeroing out everything below, and then inverse Fourier transforming to denoise the signal. Okay, so this is super useful. Uh, you can start playing with this right away. It's really, really easy to compute the Fourier transform, the power spectrum, and start playing around with data. Okay, thank you.